Hey, hello. Are you ready for an... Are you ready for another little bit of Tom Fletcher's The Christmas Saurus and The Winter Witch? Because I am, so I'm hoping that you are too. <coughs> Can you remember last night we found out who the Winter Witch was, didn't we? Well, we don't know who she was, but we know what her what her the point of her is, what her <laughs> existence is for. So tonight <coughs> the chapter is called Forbidden. If I can get my voice out, that is. Better start now before it disappears, hey. Santa led the way through the magnificently cosy snow ranch. Here where the cr here's where the crumpets are delivered, he sang, and over there, this is where the presents are wrapped. They reached a point where the hallway forked into two. Santa nodded cheerily down the right-hand corridor, which was bright, brightly lit with cheery lanterns. Ah, now, we are almost at the place where she... Where the Christmas saw is hatched. I know you'll want to see that, he added, smiling at William and Brenda, and the Christmas saurus growled pr proudly. Definitely, agreed William. Excellent, Bob and Pamela. Oh, excellent, <laughs> Bob and Pamela. Perhaps you could lead the way. I just have to make a little stop. Too much tasty cold milk in the kitchen, Santa explained, patting in his enormous tummy and blushing. We'd be honoured, Santa gushed Bob. First green door after the stocking stitching room, said Santa. <coughs> Excuse me. It's gonna go. I know it. With a nimble skip, he sprang down the shadowy left-hand corridor. Before Santa disappeared round a corner, William noticed him quickly glancing over his shoulder. As though he doesn't want to be followed, William thought. As Bob and Pamela walked on, chatting excitedly, William realised that Brenda had taken a quiet step after Santa. The Christmasaurus had hung back too and was watching them both curiously. Brenda, what are you up to? William whispered. Is it just me or is Santa acting a bit odd? She hissed. And I don't mean the jolly merry Christmassy kind of odd. I mean like he's not telling us something. William said nothing, not wanting to admit that Brenda might actually be right. I think there's more to this winter witch than he's letting on, and I'm going to find her, she said with a mischievous twinkle in her eyes. You'll end up back on the naughty list, warned William. The Christmasaurus huffed his nostrils in agreement. Well, that old mouldy tree seems to think I'm still on it anyway, retorted Brenda, sticking her tongue out at them both. Fine, have it your way. She paused for a moment, then her eyes opened wide. Hey, William, listen, your dad's calling you. He must have noticed we've fallen behind. William looked at the green door through which his dad and Pamela had disappeared. He frowned, craning his head to listen, but there was no shouting, no calling, no laughter, nothing. Just the swift patter of footsteps behind him. William's head whipped back. Brenda had gone. Ah. <gasps> uh. Did I really just fall for that? You can take the child off the naughty list, William sighed, shaking his head. What should we do, Christmasaurus? A chilly breeze caught the wisps of hair on the back of William's neck. The light gust came from the corridor leading off to the left. He edged forward and looked down it. The Christmasaurus shivered. It really was cold and gloomy, and William really, really, really didn't want to go down there, and would have turned round in a heartbeat if it weren't for the flash of perfect blonde twirls scurrying away into the shadows at the far end of the dark corridor. Brenda, he whispered. He glanced back at the warm, happy, totally unspooky right-hand hallway and the inviting green door. His dad and Pamela would be waiting for them on the other side right now. William sighed. There was only one thing for it, which or no which, he was going to have to go after Brenda. He looked at the Christmasaurus and the blue dinosaur nodded. They were in this together. They both set off down the left-hand hallway as quickly and quietly as they could. We'll grab Brenda and bring her back. We'll only be gone for a couple of minutes. Nobody's going to notice, William told the Christmasaurus as they raced into the shadows. The long hallway bent round to the left and then further... And the further William headed down it, the colder it seemed to get. He could see his breath on the air as he panted, and his fingers started to go numb as he pushed as hard as he could. And was it just his imagination, or were the walls starting to frost up around him? 
And why was it getting more difficult to steer his wheelchair, although as though he were moving through snow? All of a sudden, he had the slow creak of an old door swing open up ahead. Whoa, 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 slow down, he whispered to the Christmas Saurus as the hallway led them to a large moonlit glass conservatory which looked out over an icy garden. The wide panels on the ceiling were covered in thick snow and the wicker garden furniture had a glistening layer of frost which made the freezing room sparkle an eerie blue colour. William put his lip, his finger to his lips, telling the Christmas Saurus to stay silent. Something moved in the conservatory. William and the Christmas Saurus were not alone. Brenda crept out from behind one of the conservatory chairs and slunk towards the door at the back of the room on her tiptoes, reaching out for the brass door handle. Brenda! William barked. Brenda leapt with fright. fright. You idiot! You scared the life out of me! She snapped. That's because you're up to no good! William said as he and the Christmas Saurus moved out of the darkness. Back to your old tricks again. <gasps> I am not up to my tricks. The Winter Witch is through this door and I've got to see her with my own eyes, Brenda said. Why? Why are you so obsessed with seeing her when you know it's forbidden? I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I just feel like I'm meant to see her, Brenda said. And you're sure she's through this door? Yeah, look. Brenda pointed at the door. William looked closer and saw that there was some writing engraved on a panel above the brass handle. The Forbid Den. The Forbid Den? What on earth is that? William asked, screwing up his face. Don't you get it? Sub-Zero said Santa had already told us where the Winter Witch was, and he had. Santa said it was forbidden, William recalled. Then it suddenly clicked. <gasps> forbid Den, he gasped. Exactly. The Winter Witch is through there, Brenda said, raising her hand to turn the door handle. The Christmas Saurus let out a nervous little roar. Brenda, don't, William said. Listen, Willie Poos, this is a once-in-a-lifetime trip. No, it isn't. I've been here twice. Well, we can't all be BFFs with Santa's pet dinosaur. The Christmas Saurus huffed with a frown. What's that supposed to mean? It means I'm going through this door and seeing what this winter witch is all about. No, you're not, William shouted, wheeling himself in between Brenda and the door. Get out of the way! Brenda yelled, reaching past William and gripping the door handle. No, Santa said not to, and the Christmas Saurus has a really bad feeling about this. William cried, grabbing Brenda's arm. The Christmas Saurus gripped Brenda's cardigan with his teeth and tried to pull her away from the door. The three of them pushed and pulled, all trying to get the upper hand. Finally, Brenda gave an almighty heave with all her strength, and the door was flung inward. Brenda lost her footing and stumbled forward with it pulling the Christmas Saurus with her and they both fell on William. The momentum of the opening door and the weight of Brenda and a dinosaur tipped his wheelchair over the edge of the doorframe. Uh-oh, he said as they rolled through into freezing air and began hurtling down a smooth, icy path. I can't stop, William cried as his chair picked up speed. Hold on, we're gonna crash, Brenda screamed, looking over William's shoulder at a fast approaching row of snow-covered trees as they crashed into the mysterious Forbid Den. Next chapter, chapter 10, is called Amazing. Do you think it's amazing, or do you think there's a maze involved? I think there's a bit of both there, and maybe it's an amazing maze. Who knows? Have you ever been to an amazing maze before? I have. One year, I can't even remember what season it was. It might have been pumpkin time of year and and I went and to a pumpkin maze or it was the height of summer and it was a maze maze spelled m-a-i-z-e either way luckily I was tall enough to stand on tiptoes and see stuff <laughs> so we, we almost got lost but we didn't but anyway there you go that's a story for another day thanks very much for listening and I'll see you all tomorrow <laughs>